Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of Self Love Series. This was a series I created in with the intention of bringing on high vibe guests and game changer guests each week to um, just go over what self love means to them, hear a little bit from them, and also to share in a practice that we can tangibly use together. Um, to raise our vibration and to cultivate more self-love. So my special guest today is Nicole Catanazzi from Toronto. Let me invite her in. Hello. Hello there. So good to see you. Lovely to see you, my friend. Um, thank you for being a guest on Self Love Series, and I would love to give you a little introduction about you, and then just a little one, so then you can go on yourself and tell us more about yourself. Um, Please, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I had the pleasure of meeting Nicole back in, I believe, 2016. Mm, yeah, 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 I think so. <laughs> when she was, um, I was had the pleasure and opportunity to co-facilitate um, a 300-hour yoga teacher training in Ubud, Bali, and Nicole had come out to uh, train, and it, we've just stayed in touch ever since, and we've actually um, uh, have done a lot of different projects together and help each other in so many loving ways as friends and also um, colleagues, and she's also the co-teacher um, and lead instructor of Mind Body Joy, a traveling yoga school connecting the world. Um, so keep a lookout for future trainings that Nicole and I will be um, putting out there to you. But other than that, there's so much I could say about Nicole. So I'll let you also speak and let us know, um, of course, um, let us know where you're tuning in from and just, um, yeah, a little bit about yourself, what's going on and things like that that are current for you. Thanks for that sweet intro. And it's so great to be here. I remember when you reached out about wanting to do this series, it was a couple months ago. Um, and I was just like, yeah, that would be so wonderful to talk to you. I mean, we talk all the time, but to share this kind of like practice and space um, is so fun. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, so my name is Nicole. Uh, like Malika said, I'm from Toronto. I live in a town called Hamilton now, which is uh, not too far away from Toronto. And um, I'm a wellness mentor. And the ways that I love to work with people is to help them build self-trust and belief in themselves that they are capable of going for what they want and that anything is possible for them when you can really like leverage that that connection and embodiment in really like your your sense of peace your sense of power and kind of accessing potential within yourself so um the ways in which i do that like like i said i'm a yoga teacher i facilitate med meditations as well mm -hmm. and uh, i'm a, a life coach so i have um different la layers or levels Levels of support that people can work with me at. Um, I have a group coaching program called the Fearless Heart Method, um, which is all about that, like ditching the self-doubt and getting really into that self-trust so you can go for what you want. Um, and then I also work with people one-on-one. -on -one. So it's been a great journey. Awesome. I'm so proud of you. You're doing like all this amazing stuff. And I'll have you uh, at the end to just talk a little bit more about Fearless Heart Method and some other fun things you have going on right now. Mm -hmm. which, uh, Lots of people would love to hear about and participate with you. Um, so yeah, so why we're here today too is just uh, each week um, a guest has come on and I ask the question, what does self-love mean to you? So when you think of self-love or self-care or that piece of self-love for you, it can mean something totally different to everybody else. That's what's been neat about the theories. And just give us a little explanation of what does self-love mean to you? Mm, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, and, and I'm, I'm going to go with what kind of came first to me. So as I was, you, you were gracious enough to give me a little bit of time to think about it. <laughs> and the, the thing that kind of kept coming up, kept coming up, uh, was actually that it's so deeply connected with self-acceptance mm -hmm. and, um, being able to, accept yourself as you are to not feel like there's a part of you 
um, missing or flawed or broken. And it's really about embracing all aspects of your beingness. And, you know, sometimes those aspects are messy and they're hard and they're painful. Um, and it's easy to love ourselves when everything is good and we're happy and, you know, things are going well and we're not living through a global pandemic. But um, it's it's a lot harder when life gets hard. But the, that's the reality. That's just, you know, the ebbs and flows are totally normal and natural. And um, to actually be able to accept where you are in a state that feels lower or that feels harder rather than trying to ignore it or deny it and just say things like, well, I, you know, I should just be happy or I should just be grateful. Um, I think like cultivating a self-love practice really does start with that level of just loving what's here now, um, even if what's here now is hard and you don't particularly like it. So, um, yeah, like yeah it's, raw, it's like that raw, honest, like, ugh, like looking at it. Yeah, there's like a level of needing to be honest to to be able to to you know be whole in yourself like to really be yourself fully um requires that we don't like deny the parts of ourselves that we don't like to look at. Um and so there's ways to and you know I'll share a practice with with everyone today but you know there are ways to be able to look at at the parts that feel harder um and to accept them as they are and that 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 capacity for presence of just like being with what is um allows for such a, a deeper level of um compassion for for yourself and what you're going for going through um and i think that also kind of radiates outward into compassion for other people who are also going through hard things um and yeah. you know it, it's also a practice in that it, you know, it becomes a little bit easier the more we do it. <laughs> so yeah. it's not, it's not always like a switch that's like, I'm going to turn the self-love switch on, yeah. you know, it's kind of like being able to keep coming back to it, keep coming back to ourselves. Um, and, you know, ma makes it a lot easier to access those feelings of compassion and, and acceptance and patience and gratitude. Um, that's, that's, you know, my belief and my, my yeah. practice anyway. I love it. I love it. Um, so, so much in that, that you just said, that was like, ooh, um, <laughs> my sound effects, ooh. ooh um, I love your sound effects. If, if anyone tuning in hasn't, hasn't taken a class of Malika, I mean, first of all, you must go do that. But second of all, like, yeah, you're so great at articulating the, the feeling, the sound of a feeling of, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Well, that's good. Um, <laughs> you're great at many other things but but vocalizing sound is is up there I, i'm like that makes sense to me does it make sense to them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um my face hurts from like smiling so much um <laughs> so so yeah so what do you have in store for uh us today with um a practice or uh, of self-love that we can kind of take away and learn from you mm -hmm. from and, you know yeah like, empower and to bring ourselves up in the good times and not the good times. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm going to share a guided meditation. It'll be fairly brief. Um, and like I said, it's going to, what I invite you to do as I, as I guide it is to try not to change anything. Um, and that's hard, I think, sometimes because, you know, as much as we say we don't like change, actually, as humans, we're constantly wanting to change things to fit our idea of how things should be. So my only kind of ask is that you, um, yeah, try not to try not to change anything. And if you notice yourself changing something, you know, just come back to to witnessing and being present with what is rather than trying to shape something into what it's not. Okay. And uh, yeah, hopefully there'll be there'll be, you know, some some unfolding that happens there. So wherever you are, um, you can kind of get yourself cozy, whether you're seated or lying down. And I always find it helpful before I got meditation to get into the body just a little bit. So for me, this always looks like doing a big stretch with my arms overhead and I kind of move my head from side to side. For you, it might look like shifting around or rolling the shoulders. Just let yourself land into your body, land into the place that you're in. And once you feel a little bit more connected to your physical body, just see if you can sense the ground that you're supported on. 
And if it's comfortable for you to close your eyes and allow your awareness to tune inward, great. Otherwise, just let your gaze rest softly ahead of you. And sensing into the support of the ground, maybe you actually feel your feet or your seat on the ground, or maybe whatever you're sitting on, you can imagine that it is also supported by the ground. So just let yourself be held here just exactly as you are. Nothing to change. And then you'll take your time to take a nice deep breath in through your nose. And you can sigh it out your mouth. And just do two more like that, two or three more to the rhythm of your own breath. And with each exhale, let your body just soften into the support of the earth or your seat. And then tune into a natural rhythm of your breath. Whatever feels spacious and supportive to you. See if you can dial your awareness up onto the quality or the experience of your body breathing as it is. And if it feels natural to shape your breath to be more intentional with perhaps bringing a longer inhale in through your nose or slowing down your exhale, great. Otherwise, allow yourself to follow the spontaneity of the inhale and the exhale. And then let your awareness gently land or drift to a place in your body that maybe feels a little bit sticky, a place that might be holding tension, a place where there's perhaps a slight discomfort, or even just an area in your body that's calling your name. It might not make logical sense. Maybe it's your index finger, maybe it's your big toe, wherever your attention wants to rest in your body, allow your attention to go there. And you can be really patient with yourself as you wait for that inner calling. Maybe your knee says, hey, look at me. Maybe a space on your back is asking for a gentle presence. Listen to that inner calling and let your awareness rest there. And once you find that place in your body, hold your awareness there without trying to change it in any way. Just simply notice as if you were gently inquiring or you were really curious about that place. Not looking for anything in particular, but noticing whatever arises. Maybe there's a sensation Maybe not, maybe it's just in your mind's eye, exploring or examining that place within you or on you. Whatever is there is welcomed with your present awareness. Exactly as it is. And if that space is within hand's reach, I invite you to gently 
place your hand there. And if it's not within reach, again, in your mind's eye, imagine that you are softly holding that place, that space. And as you rest your hand over that space, imagine that it was a really delicate flower. And so this touch that you offer to yourself is very tender, very loving. Compassionate. Feel yourself breathe into that delicate flower. Each inhale infusing it with that almost sense of wonder or awe. Let whatever feelings arise be as they are. And if your mind wanders, just come back to that really gentle and loving presence. Spend a couple more rounds of breath here. Again, with each inhale, feel that acceptance, that loving awareness grow. And with each exhale, allow it to almost permeate through your whole being. Follow two more cycles of breath, really treasuring this part of you. And with your next exhale, if your hand was over that place, you can bring your hand back down into your lap. Take a Slow, full breath in through your nose. And exhale out the mouth. If the eyes were closed, let them flutter open. Take a moment to come back into the space that you're in. Hmm. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so interesting that um and maybe other people felt this as well the need to push hard or rub the area or get the knot out for example mm. and then i and then you know your guidance it was like you could feel the grip unleash a bit and like, mm. but, like right the tendency to fix mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like get it out and get rid of it it's like what if we just wait Mm. I took away from that. What if we just wait and hold ourselves in this space? Yeah. Watch, watch what happens with this delicate flower. And it's funny, I have actually like this. These oh, ones right beautiful. I pictured like, you know, this white petal. And anyway, mm. yeah, it's so interesting though, when, we, when to just catch yourself when you want to like rub the knot out or mm -hmm. get the trigger point. It's like, what if we just lay gently the hands there mm -hmm. yeah. cool yeah that's great because I, I i'm the same where it's like we we think that when it's a problem you know something like tension we we feel like it's bad and we have to get rid of it and sure it's great to have a 
massage and to massage it out. Um, but yeah, also being able to be with what, what it is. And, and I know in times that I've done that practice too, for myself, sometimes it naturally changes. I don't actually have to do anything. There's yeah. just a natural like softening that occurs by giving it that loving presence, that awareness. It's like, ah, oh, okay, cool. I can just like, I'm getting that attention that I need. And, and I think the same goes for our emotions. Sometimes, you know, we, we want to like push past the hurt or the hard, but really actually, if we just allow ourselves to be with it for a second and, and really feel it and experience it, it's actually sometimes a much quicker route to get through it and through the other side. And it's great to know too, because sometimes we do need like someone to get in there and sometimes mm-hmm. we're on the tennis ball and that's all good. But sometimes it's like, what if I just, hold myself in this mm. it's sort of like olivia the first week with her um self reiki um that she took us through it was like oh i noticed i just naturally do that a lot more now like light mm. on my body or if i'm in bed and i'm like wanting to i don't know just interesting things i've noticed lately like i'll just kind of do this <laughs> to kind of nice do and i'll just be <laughs> it gives a softening presence but also the power available in our hands and the energy mm. mm-hmm. you know so it's like a whole nother like lesson and all that but like the power at our fingertips and like there's so much energy and prana there and if we just yeah hold ourselves and wait without mm. to, to fix or to get rid of it's yeah I mean yeah I feel great because when I was sitting there I was like oh yeah I do have a little tension in the here and it's running up into here and then now I feel like oh it just doesn't, I don't even remember it was kind of there. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy stuff. <laughs> us through that. Um, and we have a few more minutes. So I'd love for you to just go over how we can reach you. And I know you have an awesome program, the Fearless Heart Method, if you want to go into that a little bit. And also your Befriend Yourself series, which is similar and very in line with this series so um yeah just tell us about that where people can register for that or um yeah love it for sure more info if they're really interested in in doing anything cool thank you yeah so um i mean if you're watching this and you get something out of it like say hello on Instagram, send me a DM. I love just meeting new people and, and hearing where you kind of come into these practices. So um, yeah, that can be like a first, a first thing that you might want to do. But um, if I have a website, NicoleKatanazzi.com, the link is in my bio. Um, and, and yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about the fearless heart method, which um, is very much about allowing ourselves to be with, with some of the the hard stuff, especially when it comes to like our inner dialogue, um, you know, the negative self-talk, the self-doubt, um, you know, feeling, uh, feeling like anxious or being fearful of doing things that we want to do because we're worried about what other people might think. We're worried about failing. We're worried about what could go wrong. Um, and really like inquiring that in a way that is, um, non-judgmental and opens the kind of the gateway to, getting to know ourselves on a deeper level. So getting rather than attaching to all of the ideas we have about who we are and, and, you know, all the things we should do or shouldn't do. um, It's really about getting to know ourselves in a way um, that, that is beyond any kind of like attachment to what we do or, you know, what we believe, what we think. Um, And that's, that's in your fearless heart. So I like to imagine that so often we're spending all of our time up in our heads And, you know, our heads are great because they help us with problem solving, they get us through life, they keep us alive. Um, But the more that we can kind of drop our attention into our fearless heart, the the place within us that is really unchanging, um, and that is fully empowered and ready to, to be expressed, um, you know, courageously, uh, the better that we can, you know, go for those things that we want to do in life, go for our big dreams, or, you know, take, risks or step out of our comfort zone or show up more fully and authentically as ourselves. So um, if that resonates with you, you know, the Fearless Heart Method is, is a awesome. It's a group program, um, but there's lots of really yummy kind of self-inquiry practices, journaling practices um, through that six-week course. Um, and yeah, we've got uh, the next session starting up in March. So yeah, I invite anyone into that. It's a great, great experience and um, people get loads out of it. Love doing it. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
born from like all the work that you've done. So it's so amazing. Yeah, I love it so much. It's been a, a ride to, to like share it and deliver it. And I really just love it so much because I see how impactful it is. I see how much people shift from like really stopping themselves from doing what they want because of fear or because of doubt or because of uncertainty. Um, and it's really all rooted in that, that uh, lack of connection to a trust within ourselves and really that belief of what, what we are capable of. Um, and so, yeah, to see people go through the transformation and, you know, come out the other side doing things that they've wanted to do for years, but haven't mustered up the courage to do is really beautiful to, to witness. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the Befriend Yourself series is something that's already um, available and they can purchase and own, correct? Yeah, yeah. Befriend Yourself is a, a yoga, meditation, and breathwork video series. So it's um, nine practices, that, like, you know, yoga class, meditation session, and, um, and pranayama practices that really help to cultivate kindness towards yourself. And I created it because, like, actually self-love um, to me sometimes can feel a lot harder to, to get to like, you know, to really kind of tap into, but, yeah. but being kind to myself, having compassion for myself, that feels a little bit easier. And that's, those practices are really all about inviting you to explore, you know, movement or, or meditation or, or your breath as it is and, and to get to know it in a way that, that is really kind and really gentle and really loving. Um, and so that's, that's kind of an on-demand uh, thing that you can purchase through my website and uh yeah practice as often as you'd like whenever you'd like awesome yeah i mean and yeah and like setting that pathway to then become more fearless and then to then yeah exactly like accepting before we leap and like knowing mm -hmm. what we want to do and seeing in with more clarity the the fear we do need to move through to get to this other side of growth and and love bigger love for our own self and what we're capable of doing yeah exactly oh. well this has been such a treat as so always good. and um thank you all for tuning in and um nicole's information you know you can just friend her or um i mean follow her <laughs> oh my we can be friends too <laughs> instagram yeah you can follow along all of the info for all of her upcoming programs are there and um yeah, I'm just so glad you could do this with us today. And I got a lot out of that. And I appreciate you so much. And um, we'll talk soon. And thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And we'll be signing off. Thank See you, you so much. <laughs> See you later. Bye.